Game one of CF Montreal season is in the books, and CF Montreal lose by a score of two to nothing in Florida versus Inter Miami. The topics today on the Sick Podcast CF Montreal talk: They started the game with a ten, but neither of the players that we were told were tens was that guy. They did some good things and they did some bad things. What were they? We'll discuss. And they lost their number one. And the big question now is, can their number two do the job? It's the Sick Podcast, CF Montreal Talk, and Marinero. Coming up, my buddies, Jeremy Falosa and Gavino DeFalco for episode number two. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to the Sick Podcast. The Sick Podcast. CF Montreal Talk. Here's the chance. Here's the chance. They've got the goal. Absolutely incredible. Cameron Porter delivers the goal. To send Montreal Impact into the CONCACAF Champions League semi-final. The sickest CF Montreal podcast. It's going to be sick. Welcome to the uh, Sick Podcast, CF Montreal Talk, Tony Marinero, Jeremy Falosa, and Gavino DeFalco for episode number two. Guys, a 2 nothing loss by CF Montreal in Florida versus Inter-Miami. Let's get to it right away. This is the formation that started the game. Patemis in goal, a three-man back line with Camacho with Miller to his left and Herrera to his right. In front of the back line, Wanyama and Piet, Zachary Brogillard as right wing back, uh, Lapalainen as left wing back. Kyoto and Ibrahim were up top. And just behind them, as a number 10, Nathan Saliba. Your thoughts? Well, the first thing I'm going to say is, you know, I think Lozada's put in a tough spot here because, first of all, he had no defenseman on his bench. So he had to move Herrera into the middle of the park and put Zach Brugiard. I know that wasn't his first intention. But the biggest problem was he didn't have a 10 on the field. Well, he doesn't have a proven 10. Let's say the truth. Matko Milovic was supposed to be that guy. And he, even he was a question mark at the beginning of the year. And now he's not there. So the guys that you do have as options are all guys who have zero MLS experience or just about. So now that puts you in a situation as a coach uh, as, as to say, are we going to play the style of soccer that we want to play? Offensive minded, putting a lot of pressure since we don't have. A number 10 because Saliba's not a 10. He mentioned it himself earlier in the week. He's a number eight. So it changed the way that they played the game. And then again, up top is, you know, you got, um, you're starting the game with Sanusi Ibrahim. And you can question why wasn't it Mason Toy or why wasn't it somebody else? The reality is behind Kyoto right now, all we have is question marks. We don't really yeah. know. There's nobody proven in there now that Kai Kamara's gone. And so, you know, he decided to go with the guy who was hot during camp. It didn't work out, unfortunately. 100% agree with uh, Jeremy. Where was Mason Toy in this game? You know, he scored 16 goals in his career in the MLS. How come it doesn't get the start for Sunuzi Ibrahim? Uh, we all saw that uh, Sunuzi Ibrahim, he, he didn't score with that golden chance in the 11th minute. You know, maybe if it's Kai Kamara, it's 1-0. We don't know. But where was Sean Rhea? Same thing. We saw him at training camp. He was dominant uh, at the position of central midfield. Uh, I don't have nothing against Nathan Saliba. He's a good kid. Doesn't have the experience as a number 10. Sean Rhea dominated the CPL last year. So uh, this morning, you know, it's sad because I think Montreal didn't put his best 11 in this game again. Against, uh, Miami guys I'm happy Nathan Saliba got an opportunity right he's a 2004 born good for him I want to see younger players get an opportunity with CF Montreal but for game number one I think they clearly sent the wrong message here okay you asked Sean Rea to go to the CPL all right you asked them to go to Valor Winnipeg is not Hawaii by the way in case you didn't know okay he went there year one some growing pains but he got in some minutes you asked them to go back year two much to his chagrin but you know what The kid, he went. He went there. He went back to Winnipeg. And you said to him, you said, hey, you know what? Show us that you can score five-plus goals. Show us that you can get about 10 assists in that league. Show us that you can be one of the better players in that league. And if you will be, then you'll come back, and then you're going to be on our team. And you know what? Then you're going to be one of our guys. So what does he do? He goes to that league. He plays 27 games. He plays 2,275 minutes. He's voted 
you know, the best U21 Canadian player in the league. He picks up five goals. He picks up nine assists. The nine assists are a league record. On the contrary, Nathan Saliba is playing in the PLSQ. Guys, the PLSQ is not the Canadian Premier League. And he played 507 minutes, and he played seven games. Mm -hmm. And 507 minutes isn't 2,275 minutes. And seven games isn't 27 games. Reyes played 50 CPL games in the past two years. And guys, if you're going to play, listen, I have no problem with Saliba playing. If you're going to play him as an eight, play him. But if you're going to play with a 10, play with a real 10. Now, well, Rhea could play as yeah. a real 10, and he can play as a winger. Saliba is an eight. Well, Wrong move, listen, guys. The, the, no, but listen, the, the, and the thing is, I think the fact that they wanted to go, they went with Saliba, also changed their game plan. Because Gavino and I were there at, at camp. This is not the style of soccer that we saw. We saw a team that pressed a lot, a team that wanted to push up a lot. And now the coach is in a situation where he says, okay, listen, we're going to start Saliba, uh, but we're going to sit back. We're going to sit back. We're uh -huh. going to wait for them. We're going to try to counterattack. This is not what they have worked for. This is not what was in the cards during the winter. This is the, the, the situation they've been dealt with the injury to Matt Gomilovic. Tony, the reality is Sean Rea, no MLS experience. Nathan Saliba, no MLS experience. Rita Zouir, no MLS experience. Jules Anthony Vincent, no MLS experience. Basically, I mean, this coach has got his hands tied. We can't really say he had many, many options. And we don't even know if, no, if but Rhea would have made a difference. But, but oh, No, we don't know if he would have made a difference. But he has a lot more pro experience than Nathan Saliba does. I mean, let's be honest. And once again, okay, so let's put the cards on the table. One of the reasons why Nathan Saliba probably played this game is that he's better defensively than Sean Rhea and probably uses his body a little more. As a matter of fact, he did have a real good shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder check yes. in this game. But unfortunately for him, it seemed like every pass he was trying to make got intercepted by the other team, okay? Of course. He like, was a split like, second uh, behind, Tony. He was Davino, a split second behind. Davino, are we going to go into, into Florida to have fear versus Inter-Miami, who finished sixth last yeah. season, lost their two best players in the offseason, and are waiting to add a DP or two? Like, is, is, are you going to play with fear? And Joseph Martinez wasn't 100%, guys, you know? I think the door was open to uh, for Montreal to get a result on the road. But as you say, Sean Rea looked good in the last half hour of the game. He created some chances. He won some battles in the, in the midfield to create some chances to give uh, for Kyoto or uh, Sunusi. Unfortunately, he, he didn't he didn't start. And I am wonder why why he didn't start the game. Same thing with Hamid Hamzi. Listen, last week, Losada said that he had two number 10s in his roster, Hamdi and Rea. Well, you know what? Rhea, uh, he played half an hour and uh, uh, Hamdi sat on the bench for the old game okay. while trailing one and two nothing in, in the game, you know? You mentioned Mason Toy before. You ready for this? Listen to Marinaro right now. Write it down. They're going to trade him. When you start your first game after the fact that you had gone out, you got this guy a couple of years ago, and you're playing with Sanusi. Now, Sanusi had a good camp, eh? and I like Sanusi, and I actually think Sanusi's, Sanusi's going to have a good season because they're going to put him in a position to succeed, and they're going to give him opportunities. I think I think Mason Toy is a player that they're going to trade. Well, and and it, look, if you're going to play, if you're going to play uh, Piet and Wanyama the whole game, too, and Zuir is not going to get a minute either. I mean, I, I'm worried for him, too. Tony, well, Tony, Tony, offensive mind team they don't play with two number six i'm sorry but uh if uh, the story continues with uh, zero on the board you'll have to take a decision maybe sam sam piet will be the odd man out in the next game i don't know yeah well we'll see but guys the reality is they didn't create enough offensive opportunities uh, lozada said after the game he thought that they could have scored one two or three goals i don't see that at all i rewatched the game yesterday i counted five scoring opportunities i'll tell you right away which ones they are The yeah. one that Sunuzi didn't put in the back of the net, you saw Kyoto was frustrated about yeah. that. After that, uh, Sunuzi had a goal that was called back for an offside. Correct. There was, it was a header by Kyoto at the second post in the first half. And yes. then you had one chance each for Lapalainen and Herrera in the second half. That's it. That's all. At the 75th minute, they showed yeah. on the screen. Yeah, but Jeremy, uh, it's, it's uh, enough to score two goals, goals though. It's no, enough but, to score two goals, though. Uh, Tony, come on. I mean, listen, this is the MLS. You got to create a lot more chances than that if you want to score two goals. The expected goals on the screen, they showed it to us after 75 minutes of play for Montreal was 0.6. It's not enough, Tony. It's not enough. And uh, I'm sorry, but in this league, you got to create yourself 10 chances yeah. if you want to score maybe two goals. Well, at, least we, at least, guys, we saw Herrera on the, in the second half as a winger. 
yeah. uh, with a lot of crosses on in the box. But who was there? Nobody. Nobody was there. And I'm telling you, Kai Kamara, don't don't forget that when uh, we talked to Herrera last week, a couple of weeks ago at training camp, I, uh, and I asked him the, the the question, "Who's your favorite target?" He told me Kai Kamara. Where, where's okay. Kamara right now? He's in Chicago. Okay, so but there's a couple of things we need to talk about because we're going to talk about the good and the bad. I think the good is actually that they had those scoring chances that they had. Unfortunately, the bad, Lassie Lapaline and can't score goals, and neither okay. can Herrera. If those, if that ball is on the foot of two guys who can't score goals, you probably have a couple of goals. Now, let's take a look. Let's break this game down in three parts if we can. Because in the second half, they made one change to start the second half, and yeah. that was Nathan Saliba came out, and Matthew Schwanier came in as a number 10. Now, if you recall, a day or two before the actual game, it was two days before, Coach Aaron Losada told us that the two guys he viewed as a number 10 on this team were Sean Rea and were Ahmed Hamdi. So now Nathan Saliba starts the first 45, and for the next 15, between minute 46 and minute 60-something, it's Matthew Schwanier who's playing as a 10. That's a little bit mind-boggling. Number two, uh, the second half of the game. So now Schwanier at one point is moved over. He's playing in the middle of the park with Wanyama. Herrera's moved up to right wing back. Sean Rea comes in as a number 10, and Ofer comes in at the 83rd minute. Guys, this is what I have to ask you. You're down 2 nothing at the 76th minute, okay? You're down 2 nothing at the 76th minute. Why are you waiting to minute 83 to bring in Ofer? Why the second Inter-Miami scores at the 76th minute, do you not change up your formation? Why did you play with the same 3-4-1-2 for the entire game? And why are you playing with Piet as one of the three center backs in the second half, with Wanyama as a CDM the way Gavino said? Take Wanyama if you want. Put him as one of the center backs. Remove Piet out of the game, who, by the yeah. way, did not have a good game. And bring in Ofer earlier and bring in either Mason Toy or Gilles Anthony Vilsay and go, go to a 3-4-3. Listen, I mean, it might have worked, but the reality is I watched that game from A to Z, Tony. This team was not coming back in this game. I'm telling you. They they, they added that little bit of that offensive dimension when Zach Brugiar came out and they, they brought in Sean Rea. They sort of went into a 4 defensive man formation at that point but there wasn't anything happening there wasn't anything going on I don't think it would have made a difference in the end but like I said right now this organization needs to look in the mirror and say okay listen we got Matko Milovic that's going to be out two to three months we got a bunch of guys on this team and this Lozada mentioned it after the game we have a young team Tony I think I count like six or seven players on yeah. this roster that have zero MLS experience that's the depth that you have to choose from so do you want to play the style of soccer that you want to play? If it's the case, do you have the pieces to do it? If not, go pick up somebody right now. If not, you might have to sit back and play this counterattack style, which is not interesting mm -hmm. for fans and is not what you had planned for. So you got to make up your mind here. Guys, a lot of question marks right now in the starting 11, even in the depth. Uh, like you said, uh, Tony, where was the Chinenzo 04 who came at the 83rd minute? And at least he created a couple of half chances for himself. He battled a one-to-one -one against defenders. It didn't look like lost out there. So, I mean, that's an option for next game. Chinenzo 04, big body. Yeah. He has an interesting profile, guys. But, Jeremy, listen, I hear you and I understand everything you're saying. But it's not because you think that they were going to lose anyway that you can't try. I still will ask the question, why are you not making immediate changes at minute 76 when you're down 2-0 mm -hmm. on the road? What are you trying to do by keeping uh, uh, Wanyam and Piet in the whole game? Are you trying to preserve a 2-0 loss? We'll keep it at 2-0. That sounds <laughs> yeah. good. And once again... Why are you not using one of your subs? Lassi Lapalainen and her, Lassi Lapalainen played the entire game going up and down the flank. You don't think he was tired at one point? Of course. You have of a fresh Mason tired. toy and a fresh Vilsain on the bench. You can change formation. You can bring in fresh legs. You can bring in guys who have the ability to score more goals than Lassi Lapalainen, this for is... example. Or nice. you can keep Lapalainen. And once again, like I, I said, take up yet. I know Lassie is not our favorite player, but at least he had some scoring chances. One in yeah, the first did, half yeah. and one in the second half. So I know he's a very frustrated player because uh, he, he misses a lot of chances. He always do the same thing. So he tried to cross and, and to put to put it at the second pole. So I don't know. Maybe Lassie Lapalainen doesn't get the start next game. Listen. He's a more adept player. Maybe Giorgio Aquizera brings more speed and more more offense yeah, was, for, for the next game. I don't know. Game. He wasn't know. even just for this game. But listen, the, the issue I've had with Lassie and 
And this is something that uh, goes back to last year. I know he's got a lot of cardio. I know he can go up and down the field. He does a lot of good things. But when the ball's at his feet, it's a mess, guys. It's a mess. He looks like me in my garage league. You know, I got the ball. Nah, I'm, Jeremy, somewhere, Jeremy, I'm somewhere you're... close to the net, and I just take a shot. I don't lift my head. I don't look where the, the, the keeper is. I'm not looking – on that opportunity in the second no, you're, half. You're, you're going okay. far, Jeremy. Jeremy, you're going far. He's a, Jeremy, he's a good player. He just lacks finish. But it shouldn't be your <laughs> wing back that should be scoring goals for your team, Jeremy. He's yeah, a wing he, back, but, Jeremy. But, but he's, want... got run, he's got to run 14 kilometers a game. You know I what? Understand. By the time he gets downfield, he's going to be tired. But but they want him to contribute offensively. That's the reality. And and when he gets that, that opportunity in front of the keeper, you, you, you can see that he doesn't take the time to lift his head and look for where are the spaces for me to shoot. He just takes a shot and puts it right into the keeper's yeah. uh, body. It's and a, you got to do better than it's that. It's a matter of confidence and body language for Lassie Lapaline. And every time like he misses the chances, he goes, oh, my God, it's the end of the world, you know? Let's go, Lassie. I, I, I hope this this guy brings uh, more energy to, to, to his he game is, because is. I think he, he's he's the, the same player since last three years in Montreal. We But haven't listen, seen that improvement, year, that offensive improvement in the last three years. He had that long, I don't remember how, it was like 20-some-odd games before he scored a goal or I don't know how many. Yeah. I mean, the guy created himself 50, 40, 50 chances before he actually put one to anyway. the back of the net. At some point, you are who Anyways. you are. Look, I don't think it was him. The player should have come out at the end. I gave him as an option, but I think it should have been Piet because, once again, the, you could have easily dropped Wanyama back as one of the three center backs if you wanted. Let's end with this, though. Uh, James Pantemis goes down with an injury, guys. The coach says it looks serious. Jonathan Sirois comes in. Uh, how big of a loss is this? They lose their number one, who, by the way, it was not a good night at the office for James oh. Pantemis. Let's put the cards on the table. Well, listen, I, the first goal, it's not the end of the world for me. It's a, it's a goal that you're going to take on occasion. The second goal cannot happen. Unfortunately, bad decision on him to come out and box that ball. I thought it was an easy ball to just uh, grab and, and keep. Uh, I, I don't know what he was thinking on that play. But, yeah, I mean, this was the first time in James Pantemis' career that he came into camp with a coach telling him, you're our number one. So he had all the opportunities here to show what he learned at the World Cup and everything. It, it, it's a big blow to the team because, again, again, the number two, Sirwa, has zero MLS experience. Ketterer hasn't played a single game with CF Montreal. So, again, I mean, the, the depth is tested here. And uh, I think it's going to be many months before we see Pantemis again, unfortunately. So, yeah, it's it's not an ideal situation. Guys, Guys are going down. Guys are going down right now. Guys are going down, and Pantemis is so sad for him, you know. Yeah. Uh, like uh, like we said, number one keeper, and then first game of the season, he gets hurt. But I, uh, what we saw in training camp with Sirua, I think he might be uh, very interesting for him, you know. He's got more confidence. Uh, he's very vocal out there, so... You know, it's not like uh, you you uh, you're gonna lose like Kyoto for uh, the rest of the year, whatever. I think Pantemis and Sirua probably the same caliber of keeper, but uh, I hope it's not serious. Well, so I say this, and I agree with you, Jeremy. I didn't think the first goal he was to blame. As a matter of fact, the one thing that no one's talking about is that Gregory beats Piet to a header on the corner kick, and then that header comes in, and the ball just lands there for Kritsov, who puts it off his thigh and redirects it in. The second goal, he could have done better, and I think he was rattled by that second goal because on the play where he got hurt, it's a free kick that he juggles that he should not have juggled, but I think he was rattled because of the second goal that came in. Long story short, I, I think we all came to the conclusion that this is a young team Chances are it's going to be very, very difficult for them to replicate what was done a year ago. And mm -hmm. if they want to do so, they may have to go back on the Mercado and get some help. And guys, one of the things we didn't talk about, and I know he doesn't play the left side. I know he plays the right side. But maybe trading Torres is going to be something that might come back to hurt this team going forward. Well, again, I mean, you're trading a guy with at least some experience in the midfield right now, offensively speaking. All the guys you have have no experience. Yeah, That's the reality. So Torres made a great play this weekend, by the yeah. way, in the win, uh, Philadelphia against the uh, Columbus crew, 4-1. Uh, I didn't see anybody making that type of play for Montreal in the midfield this weekend, that's for sure. Too many players right now in on the dis disabled list for Montreal. Torkelson, Campbell, Miljevic, uh, and Waterman, uh, and all those players, and even Pantemis. So it's not uh, a good start of the season for CF Montreal right now.
It is your number one. We are your number one English CF Montreal podcast. And of course, your number one is right there with those two guys, Jeremy Filosa and Gavino Di Falco avec EMFC Radio. This is the sick podcast, CF Montreal Talk. You can get it absolutely for free by subscribing to our YouTube channel and check us out on Twitter at SickPod, C-F-M-T-L. Until next time, he's the Falco, he's the Filosa. I'm Marinaro, the Sick Podcast. Subscribe now. Ciao for now. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast, CF Montreal Talk on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.